I'm in the midst of testing Personas Studio One version 7.2 Professional for the Linux platform. And I thought I'll do this video because I'll get this question asked all the time about the multi-track recording using the Tascam Model 12 into a DAW. I'm using Studio One, but this uh, answers the question to any DAW that you are using. And the question I always get asked is, can I record the compression and EQ and augs and panning and fader levels in my DAW while I'm recording? So I hopefully answer that question in this video. Hi there and welcome to the channel. I hope you're doing well. If this is your first time here and you enjoy the topics I cover, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you find this uh, video helpful, informative, or even just entertaining, please give it a like and uh, share it around. It really helps my channel grow. Now, let's get on to the video. I do have a video that I talk about and um, go through the manual and show you what gets recorded as a USB multi-track mode. I will leave a link about here somewhere. You can order in the description. You can click and learn about it. And the question is, when we are recording multi-track, so each individual channel going into our DAW, can we record the um, low cut? And um, what's the purpose of the gain? And how that affects our recording? And the compression, equalization, and whether we can record the auxiliary sends, the panning left and right, or the faders. Now, the quick answer is that the USB routing does not reach all the way to the faders. I highly doubt any audio interface or mixer will allow you to do that because it just not, does not make sense because the fader is feeding a mix bus into a stereo bus. So the le fader levels, as you will find out in just a moment, have no effect on to the recording level of into your DAW. Same goes with panning. It does not matter because panning is a stereo field left and right. And while you are recording in your DAW, especially a mono track like a microphone, uh, it's only one input, so it has no effect. That is something you uh, do in your uh, DAW. Auxiliary sense, again, has makes no sense to record or have any effect in your DAW. Some mixers, like my UFX 1604, there is an option that allows you to record the auxiliary sends as a separate USB channel. But that's for another topic. If you want to learn about it, I do have a whole series on UFX 1604 Behringer, which is no longer available. It's a discontinued model, but that's what it used to do. But in model 12, 16, 24, none of that exists. Um, with the EQ and compression, there is an option in the menu to select whether you want the signal to be uh, pre-compression, after compression, or after compression and equalization. By default, it's always pre-compression and pre-EQ. That way you are not printing any compression or any equalization that you are setting while you are uh, recording the live track. So that is something you can do later on. And in that video that I had the link uh, just uh, previously explains the reason, my personal reasons why I've chosen that. So I do have tracks enabled. I've got eight microphones in my DAW that uh, I have eight microphones connected. And let's uh, give it a play. I'm going to turn all the faders down. And so you can actually see the inputs. These are my, here you can see my input levels here. And these are my tracks armed, ready for recording. So let's uh, press record and let our drummer start uh, to play. And we should be able to see some lights coming up, as well as the inputs coming up here, the levels. But we cannot hear anything. That is because we have our faders down. And our faders are um, uh, summed to the main output, which is also our headphone. So once we start turning the faders up, now we can hear it. And this is what is called direct monitoring. So even though we had our faders all the way down, no signal into our headphones or to the mains, we can see on the screen that it's still recording. And that recording level 
is determined by the gain. So if I start, uh, let's say, uh, turning down the kick, this is my kick, the first channel, you will see how the level goes down over here. Okay? And I can turn it up back to a nice uh, recording level. And that affects the recording. Same with the high cut. If I add high cut, that will also enable and print with the high cut on. So depending on what instrument you are recording, you got to make sure that you're not cutting sort of the low cut on kicks and so on. But anything else that I do, let's say I've got the kick here and or the snare, I can add compression and I can EQ the hell out of it. This will not affect the recording level because it's not set uh, post uh, EQ and compression. It's set by default pre-compression and pre-EQ. Well, I hope this answers the question of how it actually records. And this is common to many mixer audio interfaces. The signal usually goes pre-everything else. I think in models 16 and 24 um, is after compression by default as well because they are analog boards. You cannot set them in the menu. But if, with the 12 being a digital uh, system, there is an option to set where you want it. But for 16 and the 24 and, and many others, they are, I think, post-compression. So you got to make sure that you don't add too much compression because that gets printed into USB in uh, audio into your DAW. Well, that's it for today's video. I hope this video was helpful. And if you like to replicate and support me and the channel financially, you can click the super thanks button, become a channel member for a dollar a month with access to members only videos, earlier releases and more. Or make a one time PayPal donation using the link in the description. Your support means the world to me. And as you may notice, most of my videos don't have monetization enabled or minimum um, ads uh, enabled because just like you, I also get annoyed with so many videos and videos length of 30 seconds or more. So that's annoying. But if you want to support me financially and avoid the ads, become a member. It's just a dollar a month. That will support me and encourage me to make more videos for you guys. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great time making music and I'll catch you in the next one.